Hi, Arabella. How do I work with my baby uh, around the effects of cerebral palsy? Now, first of all, we need to change your program a bit. Um, the one thing that I'm not happy with is I don't like the vision. I think you're dealing with delayed visual maturation. I think that because you were checked out, most likely the NICU told the eyes were fine. This is where I'm looking for the report. You need to understand what they were looking at. I think that they were only looking at the structure of the eye, the, the optic nerve, the retina, and they said that they, did, they were fine. I don't think you, the, your child's been looked at for functional vision whatsoever. So I'm not happy with his visual uh, progress and how he's responding. Um, second of all, you're looking for midline. That's not how babies work, right? What we need is weight transfer and transitional movements. So I hope you're not just putting him in tummy time, that you're working with my tummy time course. Um, one of the things here that you see, right? So, and then again, this is where I don't like the vision. You're, you're putting your child in. Now, by the way, I'm on a table. You can do a chair to the couch. You can do a chair to the bed or something to that effect. You can work on your dining room table. It's a baby. You are not going to be able to work with your child on any kind of developmental skills when you're on the floor and working with your child. And so this is why I'm suspecting you're not working with my courses because you really want this. Now I'm holding my baby's face like this because it's a rubber doll and it doesn't hold its head up really well. So that being said, please, this over a boppy is not tummy time. Okay, one of the things that you're having because there's there's the, the damage to the brain, your PDL one, not major, but at the same time too, if you're trying to work on midline, eight as your objective, the reason you're getting frustrated and so is your child is because you have a midline interruption due to the trauma and the damage to the brain. So one of the things that you'll learn in the tummy time course is, again, it's about that weight transfer to the left and to the right. This is tummy time, because eventually you're going into all fours and you're reaching. Every movement your child makes in development leads to another movement. They're not static poses. Leaving your child just on a boppy, and I get it that it's a random picture and you're trying to support your child, that is not going to lead to any kind of movements. Why? Because your child's not learning how to get in and out of the movement. So, so tummy time, and, and this is again, big mistake. People do this for tummy time. Well, guys, if I went to the gym, I couldn't do anything with this. How is your baby going to do something like that? Oh, they're supposed to support the head. If you think that that's development, and I'm not picking on you. You need to understand development, so I'm just teaching it one more variation. If you think that that's going to get a child to do dummy tummy time, all they're working on is neck muscles, which they shouldn't be working on neck muscles because when they go to a load lift variation, they negate any kind of weight transfer. And in this position, I can't get in and out of it. So again, if I go to the gym and I'm working on a plank, I stop talking to you. I can maybe go two minutes on a plank because I have strength and then I collapse. I don't want to collapse. I don't want a prevention of a fall. So in these kind of positions, what you're working on, and this is also where you'll see the sway of a crossing of midline. So what it looks like here when you're coming underneath, and again, I have to hold my baby's head because it's rubber, but what you're seeing is this is a true tummy time through the pelvis, and that's how they work from that side to side, right? But 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 that collapse of the system, and, and what he's doing is, is I think he's over to the side too because he's have a hard time lifting his head to look up, so he's going off to the side, and that gives a, a very, very visual, it increases the visual range, but that doesn't mean it's functional. And so, and, and, and that's what's going on too. Again, uh, the, the hands need to be, when you're working with your child, on the ground. So again, they get that weight transfer. Something like this is called babies can't fly. You never want them in a position. In, in other words, in this position, if I take my hands away, my baby's going to fall down. In this position, technically, if I take my hands away, my baby will stay up because it's got it, right? That's what it is. Sorry, I have to, again, grab my, my, my rubber doll's head. So that's where we're at. And again, um, the, the, the images of, of on the back and so forth, that, that random looking and so forth, I really would like your child checked out by an ophthalmologist. I'd love to see the reports, but for you to assume right now, visually your child's fine, you, you really, um, you need to get on that. I don't, I don't agree. Um, 
Uh, so, so that's where you, we need to stimulate the vision and the visual uh, responses. Um, two things to be looked at when you, if you do go to, um, have them check ahead of time with the lights on the eyes because I think what you're seeing, and this is typical of delayed visual maturation. So when, when let's say there's a light put at me, right? My, I should have both pupils contracting to adjust the light and then when you know, and then going, so that should be equal. That happens first before the convergence starts kicking in. Convergence, you'll start to see an immature convergence at around four and a half months. What you're looking at here is, I think you're getting either a delayed vision focus of, it, of allowing the light in and out, or an uneven. And so before the eyes are dilated, please have your eye doctor check to see if the muscle responses are are equal you don't always have equal because you've had brain trauma on the one side and it's affecting the other eye right just like it'll have more of a dominance right i know you're seeing more of a global effect of it but still you you can you have an unevenness or can um, also too with the pvls you can have almost blind spots because you have the trauma here and you have maybe a spot here where vision is going to be difficult we want to stimulate that now versus waiting so so because of that you need to be in that care of making sure you're on good visual progress and you're exciting the vision um, this isn't just putting black and white on their face and so with that too, you want to have more of a, a blank surface. I wouldn't go with black. I don't like black and white big rooms. Um, I will pick on Doman for this uh, kind of thing uh, because there's no depth perception. There's no, I don't, your child, the, the, the visual uh, uh, responses don't look that immature that you need to sit them in a black box with Christmas lights. Again, that's not functional vision. Yeah, yeah, they're staring at it, but it's, you know, our kids are clockwork to orange. Um, I'm showing my age, but it was in, in a movie where, you know, you, you, they were stuck watching TV. Anyway, um, and then the third thing, too, that you really have to watch, you got to stop age adjusting. Your child is of age, and that's the age you're working on. Age adjustment doesn't catch up. We work on time-dictated uh, development, you know, not baby-dictated. And so now you're on a huge baby-dictated development because now you're age adjusting. Um, and it's just going to kick you guys. It really is. Um, because when, when's a catch up supposed to happen? So that's what you're looking at there. So I really would like you to understand development of where your child should be at then. But right now, don't jump. I want you in the tummy time course, but I also want you to work on my breathing course to get that spine and the, and that more activated because, um, of the, the, the respiratory, uh, I wouldn't call it that you had it because you're not mentioning it, but you still had IVs on and leads and all that, making breathing a bit more labored than I'd like. It'll help you with your touch and then with the newborn movement assessment. Um, and those are where you're going to start. I want a follow-up video within two weeks, and I'd love to see the vision report. Thanks.